SpaceX's aspirational goal has been to land the first humans on Mars by 2024. A key element of the program is planned to be the SpaceX Starship, a fully reusable super heavy lift launch vehicle under development since 2018. All in all, the trip to Mars would take about 21 months, nine months to get there, three months there, and nine months to get back. This is a long period to be in space, and this could affect your body because there is no gravity. The astronauts on the International Space Station have to exercise several times a day to maintain their bones and muscle strength, and they are spending less time than what could be spent on a Mars trip. That's why we made this episode. Is there a way to keep them grounded in space? Can we create artificial gravity? Before we start, if you are new here, it will be greatly appreciated if you liked and subscribed to our channel. It's free, and you will receive a lot of value. Staying grounded in space is important. Your thoughts are better processed, and the mind works more optimally. Being able to organize and deal with whatever may arise. In the absence of gravity, there is no weight load on the back and leg muscles, so they begin to weaken and shrink. In some muscles, degeneration is rapid, and without regular exercise, astronauts may lose up to 20% of their muscle mass within 5 to 11 days. Astronaut Scott Kelly's medical results after one year in space show some changes due to long-term shifts in fluids. I stretch. You stretch because you're not being compacted by gravity. Correct. So I'm like 5, 6 now. My brother's still 3 foot 6. Because of microgravity, Gravity and also led to a thickening of the carotid arteries that deliver blood to the brain, which can be a marker for heart disease. That same fluid shift caused changes in eye shape and other issues that hurt Scott's vision. So there's cosmic radiation that actually you can see with your eyes closed, little flashes like fireworks. And then when you realize that that radiation is also going through your brain, kind of keeps you up at night. Scientists have few ideas on how to keep astronauts grounded in space. In lots of books, movies, and TV shows like A Space Odyssey 2000 one. People on spaceships walk around like they would on Earth. The entire space station spins to create an artificial gravity. In real life, though, astronauts in space float. The difference isn't just because the books, movies, and TVs are fiction. It's that in those fictional worlds, artificial gravity exists. In our world, it doesn't yet, but it may be coming. In the 1960s, NASA developed this huge machine to test the possibility of simulated gravity. The reference frame of the machine is moving in the opposite way of the astronaut. There is no actual force that pulls the astronaut outwards, just his inertia carrying him forward and the floor is providing centripetal force to prevent him from flying off. And if we make the reference frame of the machine move with the astronaut, this will cancel the inertial. The frame's centrifugal force is a real force that pushes him downward just like gravity. From an engineering perspective, forces must be balanced. If the size and direction of the forces acting on an object are exactly balanced, then there is no net force acting on the object. And the object is said to be in equilibrium. And this should follow Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you've ever been on a carnival ride like the spinning teacups, you felt artificial gravity. When you are inside a large spinning object, you will feel a pull toward the outside wall. This is because of inertia. Your body is resisting the change in motion of the object spinning around you. We feel inertia as something that doesn't exist. This is also called centrifugal force. The force seems to pull us to the outside edge of the rotating teacup. Artificial gravity is the creation of an inertial force that mimics the effects of a gravitational force, usually by rotation, with the appearance of a centrifugal force in a rotating frame of reference. Centrifugal force is really inertia, but if all you need is artificial gravity, then such an imaginary force works fine. All you need is either a small ship rotating very fast or a very large ship rotating slowly. Either way, the spin would pull someone feet first toward the outside wall. This is an improvement over magnets because the whole body would feel the effect. Blood and fluids would move through the body just as they do on Earth. Bones and muscles would feel the pull when someone walked or ran. A large version of such a system is called an O'Neill cylinder. It's named for physicist Gerard O'Neill, who came up with the idea. A pair of these vast rotating cylinders would sit aimed toward the sun and spin in opposite directions. Those opposite spins would help hold them in place. The only reason we won't have them is they are huge, and they would cost us trillions to build such objects. Artificial gravity can be produced in a number of ways. However, the practical limitations imposed on spacecraft mass, power, and cost mean that achieving some of these designs must wait until technology catches up. If you are interested to learn more about this topic, we shared a great paper from ResearchGate that explains many proposed methods for artificial gravity. Link in the description. In the end, let us know which design attracted you. Let's discuss it down below. Thanks for watching.